Psalm 7, look down at verse number 1. The Bible reads, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Now, I'm not going to go too much into depth in Psalm in verse number 1. This is a theme you're going to see coming up over and over and over again. Just very repetitive of, of you know, the psalmist, whoever psalmist is in each particular psalm crying out in the Lord and basically asking God to help, asking God for our protection, for His protection. And, um, you know, just real briefly, we, that's something that we always need to keep in mind, that when we have problems, whether it be from persecutions or other problems in our life, we should always be turning to the Lord first. And notice that's the very first thing we see. It's not, verse number one in this psalm. He's turning straight to the Lord. Lord, you know, save me, help me from those that persecute me, deliver me. Verse number two says, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. And again, this is important just to remember for ourselves and just bring to mind that there are those people that hate God and that, and that hate him just with immense hatred. And because they hate God, they're going to hate the people of God. They're going to hate people not just, not just everyone that just claims the name of Christ, but they're going to hate the people who are actually doing something, who are actually trying to live their lives like the Bible says, people who actually believe God's Word and take it seriously, and it's a major part of their life, and they're out doing the works of the Lord. People can't stand that. And this has come up a bunch of times. Uh, we're in a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual fight. And make no mistake that the enemy, the spiritual enemy, the, the, whether it be Satan himself or his devils or the people that are children of the devil, the wicked people, they will stop at nothing to try to silence the word of God and stop it from going forward. And if they have their way, if there's none to deliver, if there's none to help, they will kill like a roaring lion. It says here, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces. He's like, they want to destroy me and just tear me apart while there is none to deliver. So if there's no one here to help you out, they will very easily and, and um, aggressively want to just destroy. And we know that this is going to happen. We know that when the Antichrist comes into power, after there's a great falling away, after the love of many waxes cold because iniquity shall abound, after people become deceived and jaded and are just turning their hearts from the Lord and, and the world just gets more and gross in wickedness, and then you have this Antichrist show up on the scene that is going to deceive many people with lying signs and wonders and these, these false miracles he's going to be able to do and deceive essentially the world and What's he going to do? He's going to enforce the mark of the beast, and he's going to cause those that do not take the mark to be executed. And every single believer is going to be stamped out according to his orders. Now, obviously, we know that not everyone will be killed because the Lord, the Bible says if, if, if that God didn't cut those days short, then he would end up killing us. But for the elect's sake, those days have been shortened. So we know that we're not all going to face the death that, that the Antichrist is going to try to bring upon us if we're alive during that time. But his goal, just like we see here in Psalm 7, verse 2, lest he tear my soul like a lion rending it in pieces while there's none to deliver. His goal is to just wipe out and stamp out every believer. And we know that no believer is going to take the mark of the beast because no believer is going to be deceived by the Antichrist. Because again, Matthew 24 says that, that he's going to have many lying signs of wonder that if it were possible, it should deceive even the very elect. But the reason why it says if it were possible means because it's not possible. We don't know exactly what the signs and wonders are going to be. We don't know exactly how the mark of the beast is going to be. We don't know all these things right now. There's details that we aren't aware of. But I do believe the word of God, and I believe it's 100% true. And, that any, and, and we also know from Scripture that anybody who does take the mark of the beast is going to hell, according to Revelation 14. They are going to hell. Everybody who takes the mark of the beast is going to hell. So you know what that tells me? Everybody who has eternal life will not take the mark of the beast. It's that simple. We don't have any contradictions. Well, what if someone who's saved takes the mark of the beast? They won't. 
They won't because they won't be deceived. They won't because they can't. Because then you have a, an inherent contradiction in, in the scripture. So it's very easy to show that they, they will not do that. 